Hello folks, this is Sula once again. Welcome to another video for League of Legends. This is going to be our third video in our League of Legends retrospective series. In this video, we're going to be looking at the North American Finals in the qualifying for the Season 1 Championship. That is the Season 1 Championship that took place at DreamHack in, uh, I believe it was June of 2011. These are the two teams that made the final, Team Solo Mid, their, their first appearance in this series for us, and Epic Gamer, the same team that you saw in the previous video in the North American Finals for... Uh, the World Cyber Games the previous year. So as of this point, this was about, what was it, about nine months later after the previous video that we saw. Uh, the competitive scene had developed quite a bit since then, that by this point in time there were essentially four major North American competitive teams that were really in operation. The first and foremost amongst them was CounterLogic Gaming, uh, who is not in this game, but we'll hopefully see in a few, see again in a future retrospective video. So CLG, Team Solo Mid, Epic Gamer, and then also Rock Solid, the team that would go on to become Dignitas. Now there were only three spots available from North America to make the Season 1 Championship, so that meant that one of those four teams was not going to make it. As it turned out, Rock Solid, the team that would go on to become Dignitas, was the one that didn't make it. CounterLogic, Team Solo Mid, and Epic Gamer would all go on to make the game, uh, excuse me, go on to make the World Championships. And in a way, this game almost didn't really matter because both of these teams had already made the World Championship, but this was the actual final in the North American Qualifier, and so there was a lot of pride on the line, if nothing else, between these two teams. And of course, you also had the sibling rivalry between Reginald and Dan Din, who are sort of the respective captains of Team Solomid and Epic Gamer. Anyway, just a few quick words about the Pixum Band. You can see the band list I've got here on the static screenshot. Mumu, first ban, Twisted Fate, Vayne, Warwick, New New Zillion. Uh, says a little something about what champions were strong. TSM first picked Vladimir. Ia, Epic Gamer picked Quirky Tarek. TSM picked Jarvan Nocturne. Epic Gamer picked Maokai Poppy. Then Janet Caitlin and Swain. So those are the picks. Let's go ahead. Let's get started with the loading screen next. All right, so here we are on the loading screen. Now, one thing I'm going to point out right away is note that there is a Teemo on each team, a sixth person, a Teemo on each team. That is to use the Observer client. The not quite, uh, not quite the modern spectator mode yet, but as I mentioned in the previous retrospective, Riot had basically made up this thing whereby you could put a sixth person as an observer in each game. And so Freak is going to be the observer on the solo mid side, and we're going to be seeing the game from his perspective. And Rivington is actually the one on the Epic Gamer side. They both picked Teemo because Teemo has no global abilities. And uh, you, you see the Revive Summoner. You also see the little old man with the uh, like glowing eyes. That was the Observer Summoner. And that was basically how Riot was able to observe these games before they had officially created their spectator mode. Anyway, we've also got the lineup. We should mention that. So for solo mid, we have the odd one, Reginald, Chaos, Rain Man, and X Special was sort of the classic solo mid lineup. As for Epic Gamer, their lineup is completely different from the last time that you saw them. In fact, I believe the only player that's still on the team from the previous video nine months earlier is Dan Din. Dan is no longer a top laner. Dan is now the jungler for Epic Gamer. Alongside them, they now have Westrice, who is going to be their top laner. They, oh no, not, not completely, they still have Salsa on their team, and Salsa is still their mid laner. So Dan Din and Salsa were still on the team from the last time that this team was featured. But the bottom lane pairing for this team, very, very interesting. So their bottom lane pairing is actually Doublelift, who's playing as Poppy in this game and also Dyrus, who is going to be supporting as Tarek in this game. So for those who don't know, yes, Dyrus and Doublelift were on the same team, and on the same team for about six months in 2011. And they actually were a bottom lane pair together, although this was in a period where bottom lanes were a little bit different. So anyway, this is the Spectator Mode client. As it said, uh, there's no Fog of War. All you get is just an empty map with all the Fog of War removed, and again, that was basically how the Spectator Mode worked before Riot had officially coded a Spectator Mode, and they were in the process of creating it as of this particular point in time. So both teams are, you know, doing their typical level one shenanigans. Right now, you can tell that Freak is running the camera because he is talking all about the masteries and the, uh, and what's it, the runes that each champion had picked, which is what 
Freak typically would do when he was casting games, would go through and look at what runes and masteries everyone was running. But Solo Mid does in fact have a bit of a plan for this game, and they're actually getting ready to try and do a jungle invade. Right there we see Dandin, who is jungling Maokai. This was really... Uh, kind of, I mean, Maokai's kind of known as a jungler these days, or at least he was back in Season 2 when you saw a lot of Maokai. But at this point in time, Maokai was a very new champion, and people hadn't really tested him out in the jungle yet. So people, this was kind of a new thing, seeing Maokai as a jungler, using the saplings to clear out the camps. But anyway, Solomid is getting ready to do an invade. They've warded up their jungle. You might notice the little dots on the map. Those are wards. And now they're getting ready to invade Dan Din at his blue buff. An important thing is Dan does not have flash on Maokai. He is jungling with smite, and he's jungling with exhaust and there's the clairvoyance comes in get vision note that dyrus and double lift are able to flash away but dan has no flash he's going to get exhausted and he is then going to be killed for first blood and x special is going to be the one who picks that up probably not the one that solo mid wanted to get that first blood but he is in fact going to take that by the way dyrus is going to disconnect apparently you, he had said in chat that he was getting some kind of bug and so he quit and rejoined now again think of how far league has come this was back in the day when there was no tournament client that meant that there was no way to pause the game just like when you play on the north american or european servers if someone disconnects you just have to keep going there's no way to pause so dyrus disconnects and they just have to play out the first 30 you know they have to play out like the first minute or so of the laning phase without one of the teams having one of their laners and there's no ability to pause so they just go right on uh and now dyrus comes back and reconnects to the game so uh, it really is funny that um a game that would deter a game that was like de intended to determine who would go to the world championships has you know champions just disconnecting and getting lag and of course they're not playing this on land they're playing this on the servers with all of the various latency issues that people get but uh, so anyway uh really is amazing how far this game has come in the three years since this game was played only three years since then but the game has come a long way indeed so anyway let's let me talk a little bit about the laning matchups in top lane we have the rain man playing as jarvan against west rice who's playing as quirky in the mid lane, we have Reginald playing as Vlad against Sauls, who's playing as Swain. And by the way, some people mentioned in comments for the last video how to pronounce that name. I'm just going with what the casters used in the game. They called him Sauls. I know some people have said it's Salsi. Maybe that's correct. I'm not sure. But for this particular game, the casters were going with Sauls. So that's what I'm using for Epic Gamers mid laner. In the jungle, we have the odd one jungling as Nocturne against Dan Din, who's jungling as Maokai, as we've seen. And then that bottom lane is the one that's really interesting, because here is where you're seeing a bit of a contrast in style between these two teams. Team Solo Mid has Kaox playing as uh, Caitlyn and X Special playing as Janna, the two of them, of course, who were a, you know, were a duo lane together for the better part of two years, sort of the famous Kaox X Special bottom lane. Neither one, of course, playing for Solo Mid anymore. And on the other side, Epic Gamer has the very strange bottom lane pairing of Double Lift on Poppy and Dyrus on Tarek. So we have a Poppy Tarek bottom lane against a Kate Janna bottom lane, which is really quite interesting. So here, like I said, here's where we get a little bit of the contrast in style between these two teams. Solo Mid was experimenting with the European style, which was to have an AD in, have your AD in bottom lane, your AD carry down in the bottom lane, along with a support like Janna or Soraka or Tarek or something like that. The, the champions we tend to think of as being more traditional supports. Epic Gamer, though, if you've noticed what they've done, they have their AD up in top lane, which was sort of the way that North America was used to doing things, putting your AD up in top lane or in mid lane. Just basically your carries would be in the solo lane. And then they've got the Poppy, you know, got the Poppy Tarek bottom lane. So that looks very similar to what we saw in the last retrospective. If you watched the previous one I put up on this channel, I guess roughly a week ago now. So Epic Gamer is still sort of stuck in the 2010 metagame, that is, put carries in solo lanes that the basic idea you know just stick your carry in a solo lane and then bottom lane is just sort of like this weird lane where you just kind of stick champions who don't have another place to go on the map because you've got to have a duo lane somewhere whereas i said uh solo mid is using the uh you know european setup which was the ad plus support in bottom lane and then you know two solo laners champions that are safer you know jarvan for example has his flagpole toss so he can get out of trouble he's also much tankier as opposed to corky yes corky has his valkyrie obviously but um, you know, he's inherently squishy. Also, Westrice is running Ghost Flash Summoners, which was very standard when you put an AD in a solo lane, because you just want to get as many, as much escapability on them 
as possible. So anyway, if you're thinking about this, you might be saying, well, wait a minute. Tarek and Poppy cannot possibly lane against Kate. Kate's just going to rip them apart. And, well, that's certainly true. And you see right there, Double Left almost died. He actually survived thanks to a nice heal that came out from Dyrus. But, I mean, Double Left is on no health. And he's just be getting picked apart at range by Chaos's Caitlyn here. And, and it's not even his fault. There's nothing that he can do. Like, you just can't, you just can't have this lane. There's no way that Poppy's going to be able to get farm here because Kate is just going to use her range advantage to pick Poppy apart. And you can see what happened. Double Lift is going to be forced to recall back to base and he's going to miss out on this farm that uh, Solomid is rightly shoving into the tower right now in order to deny it. So Double Lift is going to fall way, way, way far behind in this match. And, it, you know, it's just due to this impossibly difficult lane matchup. So again, with time, people would realize that, you know, you, you just can't run a lane like this because you give up all map pressure on the bottom side of the map and you're going to be denied so much farm in the laning phase. And so you would you would increasingly not see this as time goes on. But as I said, Epic Gamer was still kind of stuck in this 2010 metagame and they were, you know, just running like these really weird, bizarre laning setups which is exactly why Double Left is going to have so much trouble in this game getting going. Uh, one interesting thing that I'll mention about Double Left is back in early Season 1, Double Left was not known for his AD play, like was not known for playing Bane or Ezreal or the champions he's better known for now. And Double Left was actually known for playing two champions, for playing Blitzcrank and for playing Poppy. And you see him running his running his uh, Poppy in this game, but that was what he typically played was uh, Poppy and Blitzcrank were his best known champions. And Epic Gamer would actually change their lineups around depending on the matchups. Um, basically, they just played champions that their uh, summoners, the, the actual players, were good at. So, for example, Double Lift's good at Poppy, is good at uh, is good at playing uh, Blitzcrank, so he'll just play those champions. Dan Din is good at playing certain junglers, but at other point in time, they would take like Dyrus, and they would have Dyrus go off and. Uh, you know, be the jungler for that game just because he was better on some of the other champions. Anyway, you see another jungle invade going on here. Team Solomid is ready for the respawn on the blue buff, and they're going in to counter that. Reginald has used Ghost and Ignite on Dan, but he's not going to be able to get that kill. And right now, remember, Reggie does not have Flash. He had took Ghost for this game. So Odwan's going to get the blue buff steal, but Reginald has nowhere to go, and he is actually going to be killed by Sauls, who's going to pick up that kill. So classic Reginald right there going a little bit too aggressive to try and get the kill going after his brother actually going after his brother Dan but wasn't able to get the kill and then Salsa is able to pick that up and Salsa actually still smells blood here he is going to note that Odd One is very low Odd One's going to spell shield the, um, the binding from Swain but Salsa is now going to flash after him and by the way check out that flash range much longer than the current flash range so he's going to flash in run the raven form on Swain pick up that kill and grab a double buff for himself so Salsa picking up a very nice double kill and double buff in the process. A huge pickup right there for Epic Gamer and actually gets them back into this match because they were they were falling uh, pretty sizably far behind earlier, but that double kill helps them out enormously, gets them back in the game. We do have Season 1 Vlad here. Season 1 Vlad was first picked by Team Solo Mid. Uh, season 1 Vlad being a lot stronger than Vlad in his current incarnation. Vlad was once said by Riot that uh, one of the Riot employees said at one point in time that Vlad was arguably the most toxic champion they ever released uh, due to the fact that he had such ridiculous sustain. You would just rush the Hextech Revolver first, which I believe a lot of Vlad builds still have. And by the way, check out all the Gold Pretend items. Double uh, Philosopher's Stone on Dyrus's Tarek. Double Philosopher's Stone on Double Lift's Poppy. Of course, that gives him a lot of sustain, which he needs to keep alive in, the, in this particular lane. But it doesn't provide any combat stats. We've got Heart of Gold everywhere. Uh, Dandin's Maokai's got a Heart of Gold. Rain Man in top lane has a Philo Stone and a Heart of Gold. All those are gold items that give passive gold generation. Passive gold per 10. And the build for Jarvan at this point in time was just to stack a whole bunch of gold per 10 items. And then finally, after about the 15 to 20 minute mark, you start getting real items was the idea. But to get back to my previous point, Vlad was this incredibly toxic champion. He had a ridiculous sustain. You could not push him out of lane. His uh, troll pool, his sanguine pool, actually gave him a movement speed bonus when he went into it, so he actually got faster when he was in the movement speed, when he was in his pool. Uh, when he hit level 9, his Q, his um, the one that uh, steals health, it would be on like a... 1.5 second cooldown and it was just impossible to shove him out of lane and by the way Vlad's passive gets health gets um, 
gets health and ability power together. Like you build health, you get ability power, you build ability power, you get health. Really toxic passive. Anyway, this is a dive in bottom lane from Epic Gamer, but it was actually played extremely well by Team Solo Mid. They were able to uh, force Epic Gamer away. Chaos was able to use his summoners and his Caitlyn Net to disengage. And so even though Dan Din spent a lot of time down here in bottom lane, they have just have not been able to get this kill. Anyway, in mid lane though, they're going to use a three-man gank on Sauce use the Jarvan Cataclysm, using the Nocturne, uh, Nocturne, uh, what is it, uh, Paranoia, and able to jump in and get the kill. By the way, Season 1 Nocturne, also very ridiculous. You're going to see, you didn't get a good chance to see it there, but uh, later you'll get a chance to see just how far the range was on the Nocturne ult at rank 1. I believe that the ult had the same, same range at rank 1 back then that it has at rank 3 right now, so you could gank from like halfway across the map at level six so it was pretty pretty crazy anyway so solo mid gets a kill there their three-man gank succeeds in in the middle lane on sauce they also get a tower west rice did get a tower in top lane with his red baron quirky skill up there so it is a tower for a tower trade but solo mid also got a kill in the process and that mid tower is of course more valuable from a strategic perspective because it opens up more of the map when you get the mid tower compared to when you get the tower up in top lane so solo mid definitely came out ahead there three man dive did not work in bottom lane for epic gamer three man dive did work in mid lane for tsm so they come out ahead uh although west rice has gotten a lot of farm on his quirky and i believe he has the most cs in the game right now the most minion kills although it's hard to see because of course we can only check that out when we're on the tab screen anyway there we go yes so west rice has 100 cs and uh, chaos is the most on team solo mid with 90. uh by the way di uh, what was it um the comparison i was trying to make there yes Double Lift has nowhere near 90 CS. I believe he was at about 50. So he's been denied very heavily down in that bottom lane, as you would expect, because, well, he, he has no range skill. And with the Janna Shield going on Caitlyn and giving her extra AD, there's just not much that can be done in that bottom lane. In the mid lane, Swain was picked as a counter pick to Vlad. That is still seen as a counter pick today. Uh, Vlad goes in to try and steal with the Q, and uh, that gives Swain a free free ability to use his combo. He can just pop on his E, and then pop on his Q, and then even go for a binding with his W. So yes, even in this day and age, you saw Swain picked as a counter to Vladimir in the middle lane. So double lift is just passively stacking up his gold, trying to get stronger. Up in top lane, Westrace has finished his Man Immune. So Man Immune first on Q start first on Quirky. I believe that that was actually a pretty good build at this point in time, uh, particularly for a solo lane Quirky so that he wouldn't run out of mana so that he could missile spam. Right now, Westrace is still pushing in top lane. Note that TSM is grouping up for the Dragon. They're going for it right now. The map is warded up, not as much as you'd see in modern day stuff, but the map is has been warded up. The wards are little dots on the mini map. So the little red dots are epic gamers wards and the green dots are solo mids wards and it's a little hard to spot them but be aware that the teams yes they are in fact warding so dsm takes the dragon west rice is shoving in top let's see if he's able to get this tower but i don't think he's quite going to be able to get this one no reggie comes over and is going to be able to put a stop to that so it is a trade of a dragon for free farm in top lane on west rice's quirky and uh, about two-thirds of a tower so arguably probably still in favor of TSM in that particular trade right there. And there's the build on uh, Reginald's Vlad. He's got the Hextech Revolver, the cooldown boots, and uh, Blasting Wand. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what that Blasting Wand's going for. Yeah, so in the, let's see, right down here in bottom lane, Double Lift is going to look to go in. There is the Poppy Ultimate. Again, for those who don't know, Poppy's ult makes Poppy immune to any damage except the person that she ults. So it was a nice attempt to go in. The problem is Double Lift only doesn't really have any combat items yet. I believe he went back and bought a Sheen. But other than that, he just has double Philostones. What the Philostones did, for those who obviously weren't playing the game back then, the Philostones provide, uh, they provide health regen and mana regen and also passive gold per 10. So you get a passive gold generation bonus. And by the way, check out the damage Dyrus is taking here from uh, Chaos's Caitlyn with red buff. Lost about half his health there as he tried to walk away. So the Philostones do not provide any combat stats. That's the thing. They only provide sustain and they provide a passive gold generation. Right now, Solo Mid's getting ready to dive this bottom lane. You can see that Reginald's coming over. He actually dodged a ward that Epic Gamer had, so he actually walked all the way around the ward. So here, anyway, there's the Vlad Ultimate running in. Reginald has popped this ghost. Dyrus has been ignited. Tornado misses, but it's not going to matter. Hemo Plague is going to pick that up. Now, Double Lift is going after Chaos's Caitlyn. He's going to flash away and then dash 
but it's still not going to be enough. Now the uh, Nocturnal comes in and check out that range. Yeah, that is at le that is the level six range. Sauls is going to get feared. He's going to try to run away. He's going to flash and check out that flash range again. Much further than you can flash today. So Solomid's going to pick up two kills. Meanwhile, Epic Gamer is going for the top tower. They are going to pick this one up. So they've now traded a tower for a tower. But Solomid's going to look to get a second tower down in bottom lane. They're still pushing down there. And it looks like they are going to be able to get this one. And note the Oracle's Elixir that Odd One has picked up will allow him to sweep out wards. So, oh, and another little minor thing right there. Note that the tower turned and began shooting X Special, even though Odd One was right next to it. The tower AI was a little bit different back then. The tower would just randomly pick someone on the enemy team to start shooting at if there were no minions. So that's where the tower began shooting at X Special's Janna, even though he was not next to the tower. That was changed in later patches. Now the towers always shoot at whoever is closest to them on the enemy team if there are no minions available. So that's why that took place. Uh, just a way that Riot tried to remove a little more RNG from the game. As far as that overall trade that took place, Solo Mid got two kills and two towers. Epic Gamer got one tower. So that was clearly not worth it for Epic Gamer. And the three-man dive into the four-man dive when Odd One came over on Nocturne was uh, very much, very much a good play for Team Solo Mid. So they came out way ahead from that one. And they should be pretty far ahead in this game right now. It's, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say how far ahead they were in gold because we don't get a global gold total, but I'm sure that they are ahead at, they are ahead to some degree in this game right now. Right now, Westry is getting caught a little bit out of position. He was spotted on a ward. He's trying to recall within the Baron Pit. He's spotted by the CV. He's going to Valkyrie over the wall. Uh, flash for a flash. Now he's going to get caught in Rain Man's Cataclysm right there. Reginald is coming over, and Rain Man is, in fact, going to pick up the kill. Check out that build, by the way. Philosopher's Stone, Heart of Gold, Heart of Gold, Boots. And that was a very typical Jarvan build at this point in time. The Heart of Golds are like the Philostones, they provide passive gold generation, passive gold for 10, but they also provided health and armor, which made them really good on any kind of bruiser champion. And this is one reason why in Season 1 there were so many bruiser champions that were played. You just, you stack those Heart of Golds, and you get health, and you get armor, and you get passive gold generation towards more items later on just made those bruiser champions really hard to deal with. Anyway, Reginald is going a little aggressive here, but he's going to drop into the Sanguine Pool, and he is going to get out of this. And that tower push by TSM is going to be stopped. By the way, what is Double Lift doing right now? Oh, he's split pushing down in bottom lane. Farming and split pushing down in the bottom lane. Well, we've never seen that before. So, yes, rest assured, even back in 2011, Double Lift was still a little bit guilty at times of giving up team objectives in order to go split push and farm in bottom lane. But, hey, he did, in fact, manage to get that tower, and so it wasn't a waste. And Epic Gamer does need that glo that global gold that he picked up there. So 111 CS on uh, double left. And he actually, because he's been able to go down to that bottom lane, he's actually managing to keep up in minion farm. But uh, that is a real weakness of Epic Gamer's team comp is that double lane, that dual lane that they are running in bot. They have to spend time giving double lifts poppy farm in bottom lane or he's going to be 100 useless but then that means they give up global pressure elsewhere on the map because you could see double lift was not in that fight up in top lane uh epic gamer just had their red buff stolen and but they don't really have a choice they have to do this because otherwise double lift is not going to have farm and his poppy is going to be 100 useless so um you know they just they have to give up so much map pressure in order to do in order to get him farmed basically the build on Xpecial Janna might have seen it there as it went by very quickly. He also had a heart of gold, two heart of golds and a fillow stone. So again, more gold for ten stacking. Uh, Reginald's Vlad has finished the death cap, and it looks like Solomid's getting ready to set up for Dragon. They appear to have the timer for this one, and uh, we might have a fight for Dragon right here, or maybe not. They've actually backed off again. I don't know exactly what the timer was, but I believe that Dragon was about to respawn soon because it has been about six minutes. Look at this though, Reginald getting caught out in bottom lane, jumped on by the whole Epic Gamer team. He's gonna pop his ghost, but it's not enough. A nice stun by uh, Double Lift. Got the poppy charge into the wall, was then followed up by a uh, never move root by Salsa's Swain, and that's a kill there. And this is actually a really bad time to get caught because it's going to turn into a free dragon for Epic Gamer as well. So that was not a good play by Reginald there, and it really gives away much of the advantage that TSM have to, had up to this point in time. Clairvoyance comes out from X Special, so sees the dragon getting done by Epic Gamer, but there's really nothing that TSM can respond with. Uh, they've already gotten all of the outer towers. There's no way that they can do a Baron in that short period of time. So they just have to give up the dragon, and so that kill turns into a dragon, turns into a big objective, and Solomid loses a lot of their advantage up to this point. Now the mid tower is being pushed by Epic Gamer, they're getting some good damage on this. West Rice is poking away with his rockets, poking away with his quirky auto attacks. 
and they're going to be able to, they're going to have to back off now, but, uh, you know, damage was done, got some more, got some more push on that mid lane tower. So Epic Gamer fighting their way back into this one after a bit of a shaky early game. Never a good sign to have your jungler get killed in the jungle at level 1, but uh, they're kind of back in this. Anyway, the Clairvoyance has come out from Dyrus. He sees them around Baron, but as soon as the Clairvoyance dies, TSM's going to go for this Baron, and Epic Gamer actually had a lot of people recall back to the fountain there. There we can actually see the Fog of War. Sauls is going to check, but I don't think that the Swain never move, uh, actually reveals. I don't believe that it granted vision. So TSM is still committing to this, still trying to do this Baron. It's a risky Baron play, but again, most members of Epic Gamer are not here, and they actually are going to pick up that Baron. So even though they gave away the Dragon, they're going to pick up the Baron. And now only half of Epic Gamer is here. They managed to get a kill on Sauls and Westrice. The two carries for Epic Gamer. Double Left is still alive with a Poppy ult running, but the rest of the Epic Gamers just running for their lives. Knock up from the flagpole toss on Jarvan. A flash monsoon from X Special pushing them back. Very, very nicely played. So that is a 4 for 0 and a Baron for TSM. And if this were being played in the LCS studio, this is where you'd hear the TSM, TSM chants from the fans. But uh, back at this point in time, TSM was not the most popular American team. Counter Logic was actually the most popular team in Season 1. It wasn't until CLG went away to Korea for much of Season 2 and TSM started winning all the competitions that Solo Mid really became the fan favorite. But uh, yeah, at this point in time, TSM was kind of an underdog team. They didn't really have that much of a following. It, it might sound strange, but that was the case back in Season 1. In Season 1, the star player was Hotshot. That was the, he was the most famous league player in North America. And CLG was really the team that everybody uh, was trying to beat because, frankly, I mean, honestly, CLG pretty much won all the tournaments. They had won, they had won uh, World Cyber Games 2010. They qualified for Season 1 Worlds. They would go on to win some more tournaments in Season 1. We'll talk about later when, uh, when we get to them in future videos in the retrospective season. But uh, in Season 1, CLG was the team everybody was chasing in North America. And Solo Mid, famously, was the team that always came in second and could never beat them which is kind of the opposite of how it's been in recent years. In any case though, getting back to the game, TSM pushed mid lane, they got two towers, and two towers, the mid inner tower and the uh, inhibitor tower in mid. They also will still have that Baron. And of course, that Baron play really has swung this game. It was pretty even up to that point in time, but that Baron sequence has hugely swung that game. Four for zero, Baron and two towers in mid. It's really tough to come back from a play like that. Right now, let's see, some of the item builds that we saw, Westrice looks to be building Trinity Force for his tons of damage. Chaos is apparently going to get this blue buff here because Vlad is modelist, doesn't need the cooldown reduction. I believe he's already close to maxed on CDR. Uh, there's a quick look there at the Fog of War from Solomid's perspective. Now they're going to see Westrice's quirky up in top lane and we'll see if they choose to do something. They really should try to use their Baron right here and look at that two wards right next to each other and uh note i mean look note by the way you have to click on the words to see when they time out and watch watch the left word it dies in a fountain of blood <laughs> so i don't know what was up with the graphic there why, why the word is bleeding is beyond me but yes you had to click on the word to see when it would time out there was no little timer above the word that just showed you when it would time out so uh, that was another uh, functionality that was added to the game at a later point in time so CV is going to spot Dyrus over by the red buff for Epic Gamer. It looks like Solomon's going to try to invade and get that. Going to try to pick this one up. By the way, Dyrus is stacking Doran's rings, which is kind of a contrast to what X Special is doing. X Special stacking more gold per 10. Dyrus just got the one gold per 10 and is going for Doran's rings. There is the Rain Man's Jarvan build. Again, three gold per 10 items, then Atma's Impaler, and I believe he's building Force of Nature. And look, even on Nocturne, Odd One has built a gold per 10. Even on Nocturne, Odd One's got a uh, Heart of Gold. So it's just Heart of Gold's for everybody. Everybody build Heart of Gold's. Because, hey, who doesn't need health armor and gold per 10? Passive gold generation. It's just something that's good on everyone. Uh, Odd One also has an Avarice Blade as well. So more gold per 10 stacking. Although I believe he's going to build that into uh, a Yomu's Ghost Blade a little bit later on. So Solomid is still pushing. Uh, nice job by Rain Man to zone Epic Gamer away from the inhibitor just for the two seconds that TSM needed to hit that in him and take it down. So they've gone back, they've taken advantage of taking out that in the mid the uh, mid base tower earlier. And they're gonna use that to get the inhibitor. Now they're gonna use this for a blue buff steal. And I believe they can rotate down and get dragon as well. So this is essentially a free dragon. They definitely should pick it up. 
Or no, actually, apparently the dragon wasn't there. That was, uh, the minimap said that the dragon was there, but it wasn't. Okay, here, Epic Gamer getting caught out. You see Double Lift and Dyrus are farming bottom lane, but check out the Poppy ult right here. Even with all of the TSM team on Double Lift, He's still going to get the kill on Chaos. Then he's going to flash over the wall. Then he's going to look to Juke once again. And is he going to be able to get out of this? No, he can't escape the full team. But Double F, the nice mechanics right there. But you still, you see, even with all five members of Team Solo Mid next to him, Double F is still able to get a kill on Chaos, who is the AD carry, of course, for TSM. So you see right there why Poppy is not in the competitive scene today. Riot has basically said, we're just going to make Poppy trash tier until we have a chance to rework Poppy. Poppy's ult, again, makes Poppy immune to all damage except the person that she's ulted for the, um, what is it, for like the 10 seconds while it's running. A fed Poppy is one of the most broken things you can ever see because a fed Poppy can't be hurt by anyone else on the team. So basically, Poppy ults one member of your team, runs in, assassinates someone, and you can't do anything because you can't damage Poppy. The build there that Double F was running, double fellow stones into a Sheen, then into a Deathfire Grasp, the old DFG graphic, and then into a Lich Bane. Uh, so he's building sort of this um, AP slash hybrid kind of build right here. And, uh, well, you saw the results of it right there. There was nothing that TSM could do. Uh, Doublelift is just able to go in 1v5 and get the kill on Chaos. So that's why you never see Poppy in competitive play. Riot has made her so weak uh, because her ult is really toxic and really broken. And they don't want people using Poppy until the Poppy rework comes in, which is quote-unquote soon. I'm doing the air quotes here, which of course you can't see. But, but the quote-unquote soon on the Poppy rework. Um, frankly, Poppy is not a very popular champion, so I can see why that's not something that's been emphasized. Up here, Dyrus getting caught out a little bit. There is the ridiculous sustain from Vlad. Vlad getting 1Q, and oh, Westrice, Westrice getting caught out. Uh, he was up in top lane, was farming, but he's going to get bursted down. There is the Ghost Blade finish now on Odd One's Nocturne. Odd One still has the Oracle's Elixir. Remember, in Season 1 and Season 2, Oracle's Elixir, 400 gold. You can see stealth things, see wards, see stealth champions. You keep it until the champion dies, which is one reason why, as teams got better, they were able to sweep out all ward coverage and make it almost impossible to come back from being behind. But uh, at this point in time, the teams didn't have enough practice with that yet. So Solo Mid has the middle and hip down. They're looking to group up, get some pressure elsewhere, neither the top or the bottom lane. This is back before Season 4, so the side lanes will shove with the uh, with an inhibitor down because the minions get bonus, uh, I believe they get bonus health and bonus damage in the side lanes when an inhibitor is down in another lane. So the top lane and the bottom lane will shove on their own. Not exactly sure why Freak is zoomed in on Rain Man. Looks like he's finished that Force of Nature. Force of Nature was an item that gave you a whole bunch of magic resist. It gave you extra uh, health regen. It gave you a lot of sustain. And it also gave you uh, bonus movement speed. So you got a little bit of extra movement speed. Kind of a really weird item, which is why Riot took it out of the game. By the way, there is the Clairvoyance coming out from Epic Gamer. They are checking Baron. They don't have any wards there right now, so they have to check with Clairvoyance. And we'll see if Solomid decides to try and go in and, and rush down that Baron after the CV1 runs out. Force of Nature, though, yeah. So Magic Resist, Health Regen, Movement Speed. Those stats don't really have any synergy, which is why it was taken out of the game and replaced with other items like Spectre's Cow at a later date. So yeah, Solomid looks like they want to come over now, looking to do the Baron. Again, they're going to use the Oracle's Elixir to clear that ward. Three hits to kill a ward, same as it is today. There's just no graphical representation of that. Epic Gamer is grouped up over here, but look, Solst is actually revealed by a ward. Uh, TSM is baiting a fight in the Death Brush. Let's see if Epic Gamer is going to try to walk in here and try to get this set up. No, actually, TSM is going to get CV'd again, so the jig is up. They've been spotted. Nice CVs from Dyrus right there. In Season 1, and supports typically took Clairvoyance. Uh, it was a very popular summoner choice to take just for the extra map vision. Clairvoyance was nerfed heavily in Season 2, and it's never been used by anyone since then because they've never reverted those nerfs, which is kind of silly. Anyway, TSM is starting up the Baron right here, but they're going to get forced off because Epic Gamer has vision on them. But um, it looks like they're still going to try to get a fight right there. Knock up on Dan Dan. He's going to get knocked up again by the uh, by the uh, Jarvan flagpole toss. And now we've got a full-on team fight right here. We see the Vlad ult coming in. Odd One is tanking up a lot of damage. Double Lift is going for the kill, but it doesn't look like he's going to get it. No, X Special is going to fall, but that's it. Now Double Lift is down, and TSM is looking to clean up this fight. Caitlyn is untouched in the back line, fighting, firing away. Rain Man's Jarvan is very tanky. They can't dislodge him. Dyrus, the only one left. He's going to fall. 
Uh, ironically, Dyrus, the only current member of Team Solo Mid who is still active, and now in this game, not on Solo Mid, on Epic Gamer. But um, that's going to fall, so the uh, middle inhibitor is going to fall. That was a four for, what was it, a, a five for one in favor of Team Solo Mid. And the surrender vote's going to come in. Epic Gamer going to surrender this one. And that's going to be the fall of the Nexus in this particular game. So Solomid takes this game. This was a best of three series, but we're not going to look at another game in this series. Uh, we're just going to stick with this particular one. So Solomid would go on to win the second game in this series as well. And Solomid would go into the Season 1 World Championships at DreamHack as the number one seed from North America. And granted, that didn't really mean anything, but they did in fact win North American qualifying. So... Excuse me, as I said at the beginning of the video, the three teams that went to Season 1 Worlds from North America were Solo Mid, Counter Logic, and Epic Gamer, the three teams you see here. So anyway, you have a chance to see the final stats, Chaos 615 on Caitlyn, uh, Reginald 4210 on Vladimir, and 3011 on the Rain Man. By the way, look at how this ending screen like gets all messed up because of the Spectator client. You can see Riot Freak with the Doran's Blade Teemo kind of throws everything out of whack. Anyway, but you get an idea to see Westrice was really well farmed, but he was never really able to put that to good use because unfortunately Westrice got caught out quite a few times in this game. And he was never really able to be that effective as Quirky, even with all that farm. So anyway, I think that's all I have to say about this one. Hope you enjoyed watching this game. Uh, hopefully you can see how the sort of metagame was evolving. Solo mid was starting to move towards the European style. AD and support in bottom lane. Tanky bruiser in top lane. Mi uh, mage champion in mid lane. Whereas Epic Gamer was still kind of stuck in the 2010 metagame of let's just put our carries in solo lanes and then we've got like this weird bottom lane that doesn't really fit. Now granted, Epic Gamer almost pulled it off in this game, but they just they lost the game because they kind of got caught out, but they really had no pressure in bottom lane. They had very little pressure anywhere on the bottom side of the map. And ultimately, that was their doom in this game. It allowed Reginald to dive them in bottom lane, get that 3v1 uh, bottom lane dive, and then it forced Doublelift to go off and split push in, uh, in bot because he was so under farmed, he had to catch up. And that, that meant that Epic Gamer lost uh, lots and lots of map pressure, and they ended up giving up a Baron that cost them the game. So anyway, once again, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Next time, in part four of our retrospective series, we're going to look at some games from the Season 1 World Championship, and in particular, try to look at what some of the European teams, like Fnatic, were doing in Season 1 that allowed them ultimately to win the Season 1 World Championship. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you again soon. Have a great week.